Hey everybody, this is Jackal Plays. Uh, today is a new tutorial, and this time I am going to show you a tutorial about a. It is a small feature um, that I am also going to use for my project team or upcoming project team. If you do not know what Project T is, uh, make sure to follow me on uh, social media, on Twitter uh, or YouTube, in this case if you see this video, um, where you can see the reveal trailer. But I'm not going to talk about that, I'm going to talk about this. So if I'm going to play mode, and you see in the right corner, you see the triangle button, and if I press and hold triangle, you will see that there is a um, like uh, a circle like filling up, and then eventually, once it's complete, it will trigger a uh, exit point. Now, I'm going to use this feature for um, my game. Will uh, have like uh, cutscenes in there, um, and I really want to give the person. An option to skip the cutscene, especially if you want to play or replay my game and you already have seen the cutscene or you do not really care about the story at all. Um, at least I want to give the person the option to skip. Now, I really want to like have like an option that like that you can press a button, but if you like normally press uh, a, a, like single button to skip a cutscene um, you, you can do that with simply just like okay we have like a controller sensor and then put the triangle button to, uh, triangle button pressed to a exit point um, which will directly exit the scene now I can understand that it's not very ideal to have that certain thing um, for example, if you're watching a cutscene and you're and maybe accidentally maybe press on the wrong button on the triangle button, and then you're skipping that cutscene, and maybe you're like, "Oh no, I didn't really want to skip skip that cutscene at all." I mean, it can happen, right? And what normally games doing in like to prevent such thing like that, like if you do not want like that you're accidentally pressing a button that is like skipping immediately your scene, but you really want to give the person at least the time, a few seconds, to skip. Um, in my case, that will be three seconds, so if you hold the triangle button for three seconds, um, like if you hold triangle for three seconds, then when it reaches, it triggers that, triggers the doorway. So I'm not sure if like some people will find this useful. Um, it is just a tutorial that I'm doing, and I really hope at least if there's just one person in dream <laughs> in the Dreamverse that find this feature useful, then I'm already happy to share that. Now, how am I or how did I make this? Now here we have the microchip, and as you can see, this is everything in the microchip. We don't need much than this. Um, I will first I will explain everything like what uh, what is what doing and then we're going to remake this um, for you guys okay so first we have of course the controller sensor the controller sensor you can find in the mode uh, sorry in the not in the tools Wow uh, in the gadgets and then you go all the way to the left um, to the sensors and input and here we have, uh, there's like a controller uh, icon, and you have, it's called controller sensor. So if you click that one, you stamp it inside a microchip. Now this is like a controller sensor, right? So once we have set up the controller sensor, you will open this controller sensor by holding L1 and square. And then you will get like the settings for the controller sensor. Now, for people that already know about this, um, you already know how to open all this. But I kind of wanted to retell this for people that are maybe new to this. Now, here you have a few set, a uh, few settings. Now, the only thing what we need to do for this tutorial is go to this imp icon, and normally it's automatically sends on possessable, 
Um, but instead of like having it possessable, we're going to use the remote controllable option because we need to have this controllable sense uh, control sensor act like just like button pressing uh, so we can skip uh, in this case so we are going to click on the remote control ball and that's all we need for that and then we're going back to the first uh, controller icon and here we have the triangle now the triangle I put here I connected to a uh, normal node this is just like a node the node is not doing anything but just putting out the signal uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because like, it's easier for me to connect a few buttons so I don't always have to go back to the controller sensor but then I can just like control everything uh, within the node now where is the node you may be going to ask uh, the node is also in the gadgets but not in the green thing here not in the sensor input but it's in the logic and processing and if we don't if we then scroll a little bit to the right we see here nodes and we're going to um, uh, select the node and then stamp it into your microchip so now we have here the node and if you press and hold L1 and square we can open this menu as well and here you can maybe change the icons of your liking so you maybe know which node is uh, is what uh, it's easier I hope maybe we can have more options in the future but for now this is all what we have so far and then you can change the color so the triangle is green so you can put it on green I made it the wrong color here but <laughs> it's more blue um, but like here you can uh, say like triangle is, is green uh, let me do that like this there we go and hope oh, and then here in the top you can select note and to make sure that this is triangle you can type the word triangle of course uh, or you can just make a um, uh, a command in it and that is like uh, if you can see it on the screen uh, you put these things here um, I don't know what's called in English though but like if you're uh, like it's like the, um, the bigger and the smaller um, uh, command um, and then type triangle in between and once you're doing that it will automatically tra uh, t transform it into the triangle button from your PlayStation uh, controller so now we have done that we press OK with R2 and now it is also here showing up instead of the word node so if we close this you can easily tell okay this one is the triangle so I basically can just like Connect this one to this and put it here and output to the start time. Okay, so now we have done that. So we have made the triangle connected to the node. Now the node is, like I said, nothing more than just um, an, an, an output of the. Um, the, 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 in this case, the triangle. It's not. It, it's not. It's not doing anything else, except for like putting out the um, uh, the sensor of the sort the the, the the power of the triangle when we pressing the triangle. But to we have this connected to a timer, and the timer is connected to a timeline. And if we open the timeline, um, you can see here I have made two keyframes and I will come back to that later and the timer here is set on target time three seconds uh, which you can make it five seconds or whatever you think it's it's, it's better to have you can maybe say maybe say like two and a half seconds if you want that uh, if you think that three seconds is maybe too long to press or I kind of think that three seconds is the best way to uh, to wait to press and hold the skip button basically um, so it's not too fast but also not too too long to to press so I think three seconds is okay but you can tweak that for your own now once we have set that the target time normally I think it's set automatically on the count up or the count down I'm not sure 
I'm not sure which is the, um, the default settings, but we have to change it to positional. So set the, the, the target time, in this case, in this tutorial, on three seconds, and then put, um, select positional uh, uh, in this uh, timer type. That's all you need to do for the timer. Then we can close this one, and that's all we have to do. Now we have to, uh, to find where to find the timer. You may be going to ask. The timer is also in the same bar where you got the, the note from. Uh, it's a little bit back. It's called timer. So here's the timer. Stamp it in there. And now you know where to find it. Okay. So the next thing we need is a timeline. Now a timeline you can find or in the animate. Uh, here we have a timeline on the animate, but I think it's also in the sensor input. If I'm not, if I'm not wrong, I mean there it's also somewhere else. I think. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm just lying right now. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's also somewhere else to find. Oh, but it's it's uh in the animate, and then we have the timeline. So go to animate, press timeline, and stamp it into a scene. Now open the timeline, and so once we have opened the timeline, like this, or maybe I can do uh, uh, like this, and open the menu again, and in the same animate, you see here uh, a plus sign with a, a um, uh, what is it, like a square, um, <laughs> uh, called keyframe, so select that one and place it in the first section of the timeline and it automatically puts you on the record. Now we don't really have anything here but I will show that later in the tutorial but that's basically uh, what I did and then you would get like two keyframes and then the, 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 the skip uh, doorway. Okay, that is like a little bit like inside of like how um, how the, the whole logic is connected. Now let's actually start the uh, the thing that I am uh, talking about. Okay, so this is like um, what I really want to show. Like if you're playing, I will show it one more time. If you're playing this and if you're going to press and hold triangle. You can see in the right corner it will fill up a circle in blue and once it reached the top it will trigger the uh, doorway okay so how did i make this now it's pretty much simple but you need to know a few stuff like um i made this um circle by first making um um that you can actually draw a perfect circle with your uh, with with one of the flat tools. So open the menu and then go to uh, modes. Um, but first, I'm going to use grid snap. Um, the reason why Jacta always like working with grid. <laughs> uh, you don't have to do that, but I kind of recommend you to do this. But yeah, it. I'm, I'm not saying that you have to do it, but it's for me personally, I like that the best. So we have activated the grid snap under the guides, and then we go into modes. And here we're going to select the scope mode, and then we're going to use the cylinder. Now, the only thing we need to do is just stamp it one more time in the, in the scene, exit this uh, lovely cylinder right here, and now we're going to select paint mode. And now we have here a paint stroke, as you can see. We don't really have to do, um, let's maybe make it color so I can see it easily. Uh, let's make it red so you can make it blue. Um, so here you have like a blue paint stroke. Now, stamp it one time, like this in the world. Oh. And select this paint black thingy that we just stamp and scope it inside this cylinder group. So press and hold L1 and tap one time um, cross. And now we are inside 
this scope. So we can place it somewhere around here. So if we scope back into uh, out the scene, and if we then move this object, you can see that the fleck is now bound to, to the cylinder. So if we move it around like this, you can see it's also moving around like that. And you can make pretty cool effects later on with this as well. Um, but what we have to do now, we have to open the menu again. And this time we're going to select the gadgets. And then we're going for the movers and outputs. And I use Advanced Rotator, uh, in this case for this tutorial. And all we have to do is stamp it into the scene. There we go. And now we have to drag this rotator and select it uh, and hold L1 and select X one time. There we go. Uh, oh, no, that's not what I want. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, we don't have to press uh, cross, sorry, my mistake. So I, I will do it again. Uh, so if we have like the advanced uh, rotator, stamp it into the scene, drag it to your object, only click one time L1, so you can see that it like it's going in front of this uh, object, like so, and just release it. Now the reason why I'm not pressing cross or um, is because like you're going to scope into the group and if you're doing that like you're not taking the flag with you so if we now play the scene you can see that like the cylinder is rotating together with uh, with the flag right now this is not like the full rotation that we need we need only the Z, um, the Z uh, axis um, so we're going to sco uh, scope into the rotator by pressing L1 and square then you get like the advanced rotation settings and everything we need to do is set the X and um, and Y on 0 so we're going to put the value on 0 oh. and it's also on 0 and the only thing we need is the Z axis. So if you press now the play time, you can see it now it just like rotates only in this direction. Now you can basically say like uh, if you do not want to get that it's like it's rotating in this way, uh, but in the other way, uh, all you need to do then is put um, instead of 180, you can say minus. 180 and now it will return clockwise so it, it's basically like what you think is best for you um, um, to do that but we're going to need the other way around okay we're almost there <laughs> now we can disable the uh, grid snap and we don't need it anymore and we're going to now scope into this group and we do it another uh, another time with scoping into the flag. So we have now the flag again. So we can now paint on this object. And we also have now an option in the guide in the main menu of the flag and select the service now. Uh, with me, it's already on because like, I'm not working on this right now. But it's normally turned off, so you have to turn this on. So now we can easily paint on this service, right? So if we press play, it will rotate exactly like this. Okay, now comes the magic. <laughs> uh, we're going to downsize the, um, uh, the flag tool until you think like this is, this is a nice size. So only we have to do uh, is Make sure that the scene is rewinded by press and hold, uh, press uh, L3. And now we're going to press play. And we're going to softly hold L2 till it reach, till we have reached the end of the circle. 
And that's all you have to do. Now you also see that still here flag going on, so only we have to delete that one. And now we have a perfect, almost a perfect circle uh, of the flag. It's not really that perfect, but we can change the settings of this flag. So don't scope out yet, but go to the settings of the flag by uh, holding L1 and square. And so then we get like the painting um, settings. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I always put like the finishing on 100%. So we can always tweak this um, uh, a little bit better. Um, I will say roughness. We're going to do this on 100% in this tutorial, this tutorial case. And now we're going to the second tab. And the second tab is the flex properties. And here we have to like select the looseness a little bit higher, maybe like 40. And we can also stretch it if you want. We can do it the other way. It, it, it really, it really depends on what your, uh, what 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 is your best liking into this. And we can also you can also change this a little bit if you want. Uh, that's not doing much. This is something maybe you wanna have one cool effect uh, but I'm not going to use that as well but we're still uh, not done now we're going to the next section and this is like the, st uh, the stroke properties and if we have here in the second option you see endpoint so if we move this all the way back you can see that we're making already that circle right so we let's hear this for 100% for now so I'm going to scope out again on this group and let's make a um, um, a new gadget, oh, sorry, a new um, microchip. So go to the gadgets, select the microchip, open the microchip. Microchip is very useful to have and then we need a controller sensor, so place the controller sensor. We need a timer and we need a, a note, and we also need a text displayer, and that is almost it. Now we also need a timeline, and this is pretty much all we have all we need for this so again make sure it's remote controllable connect the triangle to the notes there we go and so now we have the note here uh, you can rename this to whoever you like connect the input and output from the note to the start timer and the time output um, the time output we're going to not connect it to this one but we have to open the timeline oh we have to open the timeline a bit smaller and we're going to connect the timer output to this one here the play ahead so not in this one here not in the power but into the play ahead. There. That's that's what we need. Okay, so now it's connected to that one. And the timer, like I said, like I think that three seconds is pretty much good. So we put this on target time three seconds. And also instead of the count up, we put it on position. Now that is almost done now we only have to make sure that like the circle like this big circle is um, is doing something and let me um, turn off this microchip so it's not like um, working on this okay um, we open the timeline and then we're going to select the keyframe we stamp it in the in the timeline on the very first part and then we're going to scope into this object and then select 
the paving stroke options. Then we're going to the stroke properties. And this time we oh not uh and now we're going to move this all the way to zero percent, then stop recording, and we need another keyframe so we can copy that keyframe we already made and put it on three seconds that is like one two three so it should be around here and we can smaller this timeline and we can close the trim it like so the reason why i'm trimming this is there is there's a reason for it so uh you can maybe add another text after it or um uh, or a fade in fade out so you have a little bit more time um like if you want to have a fade in fade out you have like fade in here and then a fade out there for example or there's a reason why i'm always doing this okay now we only need to connect these two keyframes with each other so press for uh l1 or hold l1 and press cross so it will connect the line between the keyframes um then we're going to open the second keyframe Oh, sorry, not open the keyframe. Um, we're going to possess the keyframe, so we're going to hold L1 and uh, press X. So we're going to in record mode again. Now we're going back to. Um, oh wait, that is. Um, uh, wait, this is a little bit stupid. Isn't it? Uh, one sec, guys. I have a better option. <laughs> Let's let's do this one on hundred percent. Otherwise, it's uh, hard, difficult for me to uh, to select and bring that keyframe to three seconds. Copy this keyframe. It's basically just like the same. Uh, connected to each other. Open this keyframe and this keyframe. We're going to move it to zero percent. There we go. And then stop recording. So if we're playing the scene, like nothing happens, right? Except for this is like um, still <laughs> uh, rotating. We don't really need that anymore. So what I'm going to do is scope out of the whole uh, group and we're going to delete the rotator because we don't need that one. And so now it's not doing anything. Okay, so what we have to do right now is, um, let me see, so if we're going to press pray, you can see if I hold triangle, it will, it will like, um, fill up the circle. Now, the, the thing is that the circle is still visible in the very first part. That could be the reason that my keyframe is maybe not uh, um, in in the exact like endpoint in the beginning part. So you have to move this first keyframe and click it to to the uh, sorry the timer to the keyframe. So if we now press play mode, why is it still visible? That is. Um, why is that still visible? Let me sort it wrong here. Yeah, this should be 100%. I don't know. I did that, right? I was, I'm pretty sure I did that. Oh! Okay, no. Okay, the reason why it was not visible is, um, because we, we copy the keyframe. Um, okay, let me do <laughs> let me do this again because like oh, I'm so terrible sometimes at showing tutorials. Um, <laughs> okay, so let me do this again. We select the keyframe, stamp it into the scene, and this one we put it on the three seconds. We're not going to record anything at the moment. Um, by displacing it already in the timeline. Oh, my imp wants to work with me. And now copy this keyframe again. 
So we have two blank keyframes. Now the only thing we need to do is now possess this keyframe. So we're going to record it. And now we can select the oh what? There we go. Select the painting. Go to the stroke properties. This one needs to be set on zero. And this one needs to be set on 100%. There we go. So if we now press play mode, you can see that the stroke is not there. But if we're holding triangle, it will fill up. The, I will place it a little bit better in the in the in the camera. There we go. So if I press and hold triangle, it fill fills up the uh, the circle, as you can see. And if I release it again, it goes back to the zero point. So I'm holding triangle. I'm letting triangle go, and then it goes back. Okay, so. Now it still does look a little bit weird, so what we have to do is we have to make sure that the, um, uh, the stroke is a little bit lit up. So even though that we already using the keyframes on the stroke, the stroke is from the starting point on 0%, we cannot see the stroke. But if you're going to the show height and then uh, untap the preview in visibility, then you can still see the stroke again. So now we can go select the stroke and we have to give it a little bit of a glow and I think 50% is nice. We're not going to emit glowing. What that means is that like it doesn't show uh, light around it. Um, uh, that would maybe look weird in your game or anything. Um, so if we now select play mode and you can see it's lit up, so it's better visible visible for the people if you're pressing this button. Now we can also tell that like it's not starting in the top, right? So we have to fix that. Um, so to fix that, we can simply put on grid snap, turn this a little bit around. And mm, not quiet. Let me do this with the uh, type move. Make sure that the starting point is actually on top of the circle. There we go. So now we have done that, but we still have the the, the like the the cylinder in the background. We do not want or need that cylinder anymore. So oh, like. If you still want to use that, it's fine. Uh, if you have like other purpose for your game, so we have to scope in, and so we select the cylinder, we move that one, uh, and now we only have the circle itself. So for this part, that's all what we need, right? That this is all what we need for for this. The, the second thing is now we have to make like how we did uh, in here with that uh, you have seen that you see the triangle so we're going to close this timeline and now that we like we, we place a text gadget the text displayer uh, already open this one and this is going to be the background we're not going to do the triangle yet we call this background background you can also short it with uh, BG um, like how I'm always doing it but for the tutorial, tutorial purpose I put the whole word in it and the only thing we need to do now is put the text opacity to zero this is only for us to know which um, text gadget is what you can also put it in here saying background as well so we know that this particular um, text displayer is uh, background stuff and the second what we need to do is make it in scene so now it actually is in scene and it's 
should be in the center of the object. So if you press and hold triangle. Um, okay, no, it's not it's not in the center. Um, okay, so we have to bring this text gadget to what circle like here and now we have to make it a round one so we're going into the second tab we can make a smaller a little bit then text uh, curviness we set that to 100 percent then we have to untap out of it like this so now we can like basically control the whole text gadget so to make it more round so I'm just make this bigger so I'm happy with the roundness this is always a little bit tricky because like it's not really perfect round sometimes but I think this is quite I think I quite nailed this one <laughs> and so now we also have to get rid of the um, uh, show border and also the shadow I don't like shadow in uh, the gadgets um, I mean we're not living in um, the 2000 area anymore it's 2021 so um, everything for me needs to be clean so all we need to do now is just resize this circle to so we have it fit on the circle that we made earlier. There we go. It's it's not perfect, but you can make it a little bit like. There we go. Um. Oh wait, I'm not completely in the wow wow check that. Make sure that you are pretty close to the to the object. Um, like, so again, this is not that perfect for, but it's for the tutorial. Okay, so now we have done that, but now we have like a background. So if you're now filling up that circle it, it's perfectly like filling up that circle uh, behind it right so this is like a, a good background for for what we need okay so the next thing what we need to do is have another text gadget you can or copy this one or we can also just like um, select a new one but in my case I'm going to uh, copy this one because that means that I'm already in the same position as what we had here before but this time it is not going to be called background you can call it foreground but I also call it, control, call it uh, triangle uh, triangle there we go and here we have to put the code of the triangle inside so that's like this code what you see here so there we go. Type that and it will automatically transform into that triangle. Now we have to make it a color. I like to have it white. White is not extra color, but oh well. And then we have to remove the, the show text box. And that's pretty much it as well. Now the reason maybe why I'm not going to see is because like it's exactly in the same layer as the background. So all we need to do is put it a little bit more in the front and then also put this one all the way to the hundred percent. Now it is very small, so what we have to do is um uh is to enlarge this um this button so we can make it super big. Go. Make sure that it's like it's fitting, and we can resize this down to that. So if we start, if we're going into, it's not really perfect place at the moment, but like 
you get the idea. So now we have a, a really nice background for that triangle. So if we now going to press and hold the triangle, it actually automatically fills up the circle around it. Now, of course, we do not have any um, um, any camera. So to do that, we need a camera. So we're going to place a camera in it's on the gadgets. And then under cameras and lightning, and then we have the camera. Put it always first into the scene. Possess the camera. Make sure it's uh, it's in the right. Wait. Put it into uh, bitmap. And there we go. Sure that like it's on grid, so you know that like it's perfectly round. And now we need to. What we need to do now is um, is having oh here we go. um yeah let's do it a little more. Arrange this a little better. Go, and this is this is why I like to work in grid, so I can place everything pretty nice back. Okay, there we go. And all we need to do is select these two things, so we have it in a group. You can also group it if you want. There we go. So now this is the group. And if we select the group, we can make it super small into the corner. So if we press play, it's now super small. So if we hold the triangle, it perfectly fills up around the triangle. And the reason why I'm showing this, and I'm sorry, maybe the tutorial is a little bit like mess, mess, messy, a little bit, maybe. Uh, I'm not going to cut it. Um, I really want to show also the mistakes. Um, like normally, uh, maybe some tutorial people like to cut when things go wrong. Um, but the reason why I'm not doing that, like I could also just cut the video into the parts where everything goes right. But the thing is, is with dreams, but also with developing uh, games, or nothing goes 100% correct. There will always be things that goes wrong, or um, if you think that, okay, um, that you made maybe a mistake, or uh, you forgot thing, or it will always happen when you do that. So I kind of want to show that as well. And I will, of course, I will always make timestamps in the video, so... Yeah, you always can skip to certain parts if you want to get, uh, if you want to know the, uh, the the steps that I did. So I always make time steps. But now we have now we have that like press and hold the triangle button, and the only thing that we need to do now is to have a trigger point, right? So if we have reached the the, the end point of the circle it needs to trigger a doorway so we're going back into the edit mode and we go to scope into this group so we have here the microchip of that group and we're going to open the timeline and I need to make this timeline a little bit smaller close and trim this to three seconds there go and now we're going to open gadgets and we're going to use the gameplay gear and here we have a doorway and make sure that the doorway is exactly lined on the keyframe um, so I place it underneath it will add up 5% gameplay memory that's 
what doorways always do. So keep that in mind. Um, doorways are a little bit heavy in um, <laughs> in the gameplay, but I think that like if your game is not that many of gameplay, um, it will be fine. But I mean, for a cutscene, you can make a cutscene like like separately from your um, from your scene. So of course, that this doorway means that it goes to another another scene in your dream right so if you do not want to use this doorway if you do not if you have like an in game cutscene you do not really need to have this one then you can say like um connect the um, the keyframe and close or go to another camera or um scope out of the camera um, you can do something like that. I'm not going to do this in this, this tutorial, maybe not a tutorial, I will show that. Um, but for this tutorial, it's um, only for having a certain cutscene that you are making. Uh, that's like standalone in, in a scene. Uh, but you want to give the person at least the, the option to skip the cutscene if they're going to replay your game. Very important to have that option, by the way, but that is very, very important. Especially if you want to have your people back into your game or want to replay your game and they don't want to watch all the videos again uh, they already have seen or they don't maybe uh, maybe have an intro video of like a logo intro or make sure that everything has a skippable, a skippable option unless you have a really important message somewhere in the beginning. Uh, that's like unskippable. Um, that's totally fine. I mean, that's what most games doing as well. But with cutscenes, please, guys, make a skippable option. Please do that. Okay. So for this tutorial, we have now a doorway. So I'm going to call this doorway. Um, you can say skip. So I know in uh, in the dream that this is the skippable doorway. So then you can link that skip doorway to your other scene uh, to your next scene basically so if we're going now to the play mode and if we press and hold the triangle button for three seconds poof, and then it triggers the doorway that is it that is the whole tutorial i really hope that this was um something learnful i really hope that you were going to use this <laughs> uh it's it's maybe in small like a tiny call out to people that like for example I played a lot of like uh, dreams sometimes from people um, not always because I'm working on my own project but uh, if I have like a little bit of a break I really want to see what other people have been made uh, in dreams and I often encounter and this is why I always do tutorials that I encounter a lot. And I mean, like, I'm not going to do tutorials that has already been made by people. Um, that is pretty like useless to do that for me. But I'm only making tutorials um, when I see things can go or can maybe a little bit better. And if you're making a game. And if your game, and in my case, my game is going to be story driven, so I will have cutscenes in my game. And since it's so story driven, I can also understand maybe people that do not like story driven, they don't have the patience and time to to watch your cutscene. And I will tell you, I will tell you this. Like, if for example, if you have a game and your cutscene takes three minutes, and the person, I mean, like, not everyone likes to watch cutscenes. I do, I like to watch cutscenes at least one time. <laughs> but if I'm going to replay a game, and if I already know that story, like, if I because I've already seen it, and I'm already like, okay, I already know this. Um, and if you don't have an option to skip that part, then I have to wait three minutes again to finally go back in action. Now, when I play dreams or when I play games and dreams, 
I see certain people that doesn't have that option at all. So I always have to rewatch the cutscenes, and it's really bad for replayability. Replayability is so important in your games. Um, like, like maybe like my particular game is not really replay replayability unless you like the story and like my game eventually. But I can understand also that people that are not really invested into watching a cutscene, and if they cannot sk skip that cutscene, they always have to watch the whole scene again. And I'm I'm not going to call names or for for where I saw it, <laughs> but just just go for yourself. Look in your look in the Dreamiverse, or look if you have made collections in Dreams of your favorite games. Just play them and look which games have cutscenes, and look which one have the option to skip the cutscene. And I can already predict. <laughs> That is nine out of ten doesn't have a skip button. A skip button, and it's an it's a small thing, a small detail that people forget, because people think that mostly they like they like okay, everyone likes to watch cutscenes, <laughs> and sadly that is not true. People, not everyone likes to watch cutscenes. Sorry to to, to say that. Um. So what you have to do is at least give always an option for other people as well that really like to to go back in a, or straight into action without all the without all the cutscene all the cutscenes without seeing the intros again without seeing like uh, because like we all make like logos and everything like intros which is pretty cool I I have that as well and I will have that as well. But I always give the option for the people to skip all that, so they don't have to wait, like all the, the intros, to finally get into, um, into their game. So, um, yeah, make sure that you have a, 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 at least like a skipable option for people, and if it's going to be in game, <coughs> like if you're going to make like. Uh, like a conversation, um, make sure that that conversation can be skipped, or at least maybe fast forward. You don't need to have per se uh, a complete skip button, but what most games doing is instead of complete skipping the the, the cutscenes, because sometimes it can get buggy if you're doing that. So to prevent that, you can maybe like say skip certain lines in the text like okay uh, person A says this line um, but skip that first line and then go to the next line skip that line as well um, and so forth and so forth so except sorry etc 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 I don't know why I said it in Dutch but the thing is is that like it's so important to do that again it's, it's such a small thing to like to miss and that is why I'm doing this tutorial I am almost an hour into this. I hope you can follow this pretty much. I will show one more time what we did. We made uh, we made a um, um, like a circle and triangle button. And if you press and hold the triangle, it will fill up slowly the the bar till it reach the the top, and then it triggers the doorway. That's what we did. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you think that this tutorial is helpful, if you think that Jacta can make maybe a little bit <laughs> um, smaller tutorials or maybe that he needs to cut into the videos, let me know as well if you think that this is too long. Um, if you do not want to see all the mistakes that I'm making as well, uh, let me know as well because then maybe I can improve. Uh, myself a little bit later so please give me a little bit of feedback uh, if you like this or not um, and I please I really want to see this in, 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 in future games and dreams um, because if you really want me to go back into your game please make a skippable option okay bye bye for now and hopefully to see you in the next tutorial video about something that I maybe discovered that I'm like mm, I wish we had more people doing that
Okay, bye-bye for now.